Welcome to Energy Stew. This is Peter Roth, your host. And I'd like to ask you, have you ever thought that you really don't belong on this planet? <laughs> that maybe somehow Earthlings are strangers to you? Maybe you're right. <laughs> and we're going to find out so much more about that from a, an author of a book called Souls on Earth, Exploring Interplanetary Lives. Now that makes sense to some of us, a lot of us probably who are listening. And so we're going to speak to the author who's a psychologist and does life regressions back into these strange places. And uh, we're going to hear all about it from our guest, Dr. Linda Backman. Linda, welcome to Energy Stew. Thank you, Peter. It's wonderful to be here. I'm so excited to talk with you because I think a lot of our audience has tuned into this show for a reason. Because <laughs> they need to hear from you. <laughs> they need to, under, to believe that maybe they were right, that they might not be from here. <laughs> so can you tell us how you know that people might not be from here? <laughs> well, I love that you use the word no, because I believe that is the way, that's the way it feels to me and often to clients. So how do I know? Well, I'll just say briefly that when I trained many years ago in regression work, um, uh, one of the people I trained with that some of your listeners may have read his books, he's now on the other side, is Dr. Michael Newton. And uh, Newton created a tool called, uh, basically called between lives regression to guide a client to past lives and then to understand who they are as a soul. So he would say to us um, in the training, yes, sometimes there are souls that have lives elsewhere. I, I believed that. Peter. And then as I dove into my own regression practice, oh my goodness, 23, 24 years ago, I started having a few clients here and there that went to past lives, um, not on the earth. And I don't tell the client what life they're going to. It's their soul and their guides that choose the past life. Then about 14 years ago, I started noticing that half or even 60% of all my regression clients were accessing past lives not on earth. And it, it, I knew it was real. I knew the content was too specific, had too much of a flow for it to be made up. I began to learn about what's the difference between a soul that generally incarnates on earth, generally incarnates not on earth. What's unique about them? Where do they come from? Why are they here? So over the course of many years, I've learned a lot about interplanetary souls and Earth-based souls from my regression clients. And you've written a wonderful book. It's very entertaining because you have so many stories from your clients of, the, of some of the aspects of their lives and, and travels elsewhere. And uh, so they learn about where they're from, what it's like living on other planets, as not always as humans, it's certainly most often probably not, and right. or, or close to being human in, in many cases. But it's there's so many, you've had so many stories about it. Now, let's look at um, the statistics. You have so many, but I, I was reading in your book <coughs> that it's really a small percentage. Of, of people on this planet who might qualify for this and yet you get a large percentage of people coming to you now mm -hmm. obviously we can talk about these souls and how they're guided and they're guided to you because they need to be because so many and i'm sure a lot of our listeners are going to go oh I, I need that i need that and i've talked to people since i've been reading your book i've talked to people about this and a number of people have said Yes, I need to find out because I don't think I'm from here. Right. And I think I attract a lot of people who aren't from here. <laughs> and by the way, I, uh, Michael Newton has been a guest on my show. And, uh, and, and uh, one of his students who works in New York is on the show too. Yeah. Another time. Yeah. But, um, uh, but Michael was, was pretty old at the time that he was on right. the show. So. 
and sad that he's moved on, but he certainly had a long and productive life. And so, um, but we want to talk about how, why this is important to, for you and I to talk about this, because it really, in a sense, saves souls. Because the people who come to you, they really need to know this information because they're quite unhappy being here in most cases. And you give them understanding and, and why they're here and how to help them be here better. I, I, I hope that's true. And I do get feedback that that is, that is true. Yeah. Right. I know. I, I'm so excited about this because this also solves a lot of questions about, about life in general. In other words, our multidimensional life in general. Right. And, and what it means to be human. Because I'm really down on humanity. <laughs> you know, I really don't believe that humanity is humane and and I, I i think there are a lot of wonderful people on this planet and and you do talk about that you know five to seven percent of our population are evolved souls not necessarily from other planets they're evolved souls even earthbound like like right. you right. and um and also as you and i had talked about earlier uh, not on the show said uh, you you also were born somewhere else, came here how many hundreds or thousands of lifetimes ago? <laughs> and we don't know. I mean, there, there are all kinds of numbers out there about how many lifetimes we have um, in relative time of our awareness of civilization here on Earth. Because I, I think that many of us souls might be millions of years old and have had maybe even millions of years on other planets. And then at some point, and, and this is something to talk about, is why do these IPs, interplanetary souls, why do they come here? Well, I think that's a great question. Um, my understanding is that Earth was originally developed, inhabited by so, like myself, souls from somewhere else. Some of us then continue to incarnate here, we might say ad nauseum, um, that would be me. Um, and many other souls did not continue incarnating here. Um, interplanetary souls, well, let me back up, let me add in one more quick piece of information. So my understanding is that, and this comes from clients, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm like Michael Newton in the sense that it's a sort of a research-based model. Like if I've heard it from so many clients without me telling them the information, then there's validity. And that's how I do my work in that respect. But my understanding is that when Earth was created and ultimately Earth cooled to the point of being able to sustain life, that in a way we might say Earth was an experiment. Earth was an experiment to see if souls who came into body with a life plan, but were given free will, could figure out how to create a community that we call humanity and create a healthy way of life, a simplistically healthy way of life. Um, everyone is equal, we care for the earth, we care for animals, and we don't subdivide and denigrate people into groups because they're unacceptable. Well, obviously, as you certainly know, Peter, that's not been figured out. But so my understanding is as Earth has moved forward in its, its supposed evolution, at pivotal points in history of the Earth, um, the guides that work with the guides that serve the universe, essentially, have sent or embodied more interplanetary souls to see if they can get Earth past a stuck place, to see if Earth can evolve past the stuck place that happened in Atlantis, or past the stuck place that occurred around the time of Jesus, or the American Revolution, the French Revolution. So we're in a period of history right now when there is a somewhat, 
a higher percentage of interplanetary or IP souls trying to move us forward because IP souls are so evolved. They come from highly evolved places in the universe. Um, and sometimes they, they come from planets, they come from star systems, they also come from interdimensional space. So sometimes they have physicality, sometimes they have no physicality, but there is a higher percentage on the planet. Now, I think my guides wanted me to work more with these souls. One, so they understood themselves. Two, so they could hopefully more, more usefully serve their purpose here. All right. I, I see a problem here. Okay. The problem is, is that IP souls, when they get here, they, they can't find the fit very easily. So they're not as powerful as we would like them to be. They might be extremely wise. They might have idealistic understandings because of life on other planets. And yet they don't know how to bring them into this world powerfully enough. And, and that's one of the things that you help them do is to be more comfortable with themselves. And on the other side, there are souls that have been here long enough to become powerful, but not long enough to become wise. And so what's missing, the missing link is wisdom. Because wisdom is actually a higher knowing uh, of, of uh, compassion, love, empathy, that, that allows wisdom to prevail. And there are a lot of souls who, who really aren't, collectively wise, collectively compassionate and empathetic. They might be tribally so, right? but that's a more primitive way. And so they might not understand the difference and they don't mind killing another tribe, you know, or, or and that could be, you know, uh, a neighbor who looks wrong. And so it, it can be, a very ugly situation and many of these unevolved souls have gained a lot of power and run governments and all kind and corporations and you name it and you hear terrible stories all the time about how people are harmed by people in power and then you look at these ips and they don't fit in that well <laughs> So then how do they, how influential can they be? <laughs> well, I think that's part of the, the message or the reason I was given a lot of this information through clients. And another part of the reason that I happen to be an earth-based soul is that not only do IPs need to understand who they are, why they're valuable, why they're here, why we need their gifts, as well as how to cope with their challenges, because as you well know, and that's what you talked about, it's challenging for an IP to be in a human body in this human environment. But it's also, I think, of key importance for Earth-based souls, the more experienced Earth-based souls, to come into contact, whether it's friendship or family or whatever it might be, so that I think it's why I do this work with IPs because I'm an earth-based soul. Um, I understand the earth and the human body in ways that IPs don't. So we can work in conjunction um, with one another. And I think that's crucial. I also work a lot with um, not only adults who are IPs, but I work with um, Children, if they're, I don't work with young children, you can't easily regress a young child, but I work with teens um, on up that are IPs, and I at times work with the parents of young children to understand how to cope with their, and how to understand and accept their IP child. Right. Now, you have a lot of understanding in the book to how to identify IPs. And, and looking at it, I'd say that that I, I really appreciated your insights, and I can imagine it goes way beyond that too. There are so many manifestations of IP issues in life of of who we are. Uh, I don't know if I'm a we or a they. I uh, 
I know that, you know, I know I'm not from the earth, but I just don't know how long I've been here. Right. Um, and, uh, and so um, there are ways that, they, that IP souls can identify themselves through their behavior, their, you know, their actions. So could you talk a little about that? Sure. Um, let me talk about, uh, I like to call it gifts and challenges. Um, so gifts of IP souls are extreme wisdom, um, higher perspective, uh, caring for all, whether it's all of the earth or all of the animals or all of people. Um, IP souls simply usually have a higher vantage point, you might say. Um, they, IP souls often have significant gifts in some areas and then sometimes delays in other areas. So IP souls, I always think about, I don't know why I always think about this adorable little girl that Ellen DeGeneres has had on her show. She's, I don't know, she's eight or nine or 10 years old. She knows the U.S. presidents backwards and forwards. And you can ask her, I think about any president and I think any vice president. She can tell you when they served, you know, details about where they're from, you know, th that kind of thing. She, I would assume she's an IP soul. Um, but children like that or even adults like that might have trouble keeping track of time or uh, knowing directions to travel some. I'm thinking about a particular client I've worked with a lot. She's a very advanced um, IP soul, comes from a very unique place in the universe where the beings have a mantis-like appearance. Um, she struggles with how to get from point A to point B, how to deal with things on her phone, yet her wisdom is amazing. So um, gifts and liabilities, but often the what I might call challenges versus liabilities are things like being diagnosed at times on the autistic spectrum, um, having significant autoimmune disorders, allergies, chemical sensitivities, and those kinds of things, all because that soul, that IP soul, hasn't been socialized on earth or functioned in the human body on a regular basis. So um, IPs need to know they're going to be very advanced in one way and perhaps feel like there's something wrong with them in another way when there's really nothing wrong with them at all. It's simply where they come from. Yeah, there are ways they fit in and help others in ways that they, they feel almost like outcasts. Exactly. Yeah. And it's so, I'm so glad we can do this show and maybe a lot of them are listening. <laughs> I hope so. I'm sure. <laughs> there are guides. And then this is something else that's in the book that I really like is you, you, because you regress people back in between lifetimes, you're regressing them back to their counsels. You know, when, when we die in a previous life and we're out on the other side, uh, that's the opportunity to get together with uh, our mentors, our, our elders, our councils. And you say in the book that actually a lot of IPs are members of their own councils. <laughs> that's very cool. Um, but then again, it's very important, and you bring it out in the book, that we all have guides. We're all guided. Yes. And it's important for for the IPs to know that they're not alone. And you know, even for EBs to know that they're not alone. Yeah. For all, we all have guides. Yeah, just a couple of comments to that, because I think it's important, Peter, to put this out there. Um, two things. One is that a lot of IPs will say to me, obviously most of the people I work with are spiritually oriented humans. So they'll say to me, well, Linda, I just can't seem to connect with my guide. I just don't know what the problem is. I can't connect with my guide. I tuck that away in my head until we do the regression. What I find is sometimes the explanation is I'm working with an IP soul and not always, so I want people to hear that clearly, not always, but often an interplanetary soul is, is guided more directly by their higher self or their soul self because their soul self is so evolved. 
And so that's common for IPs. It's why it feels like it's difficult to connect, you know, you might say with your, with your own soul self. The other piece, just to add um, briefly, but important, I think, is um, many of my IP clients, when I guide regression, they are able to go to what I like to call their home base. They get to go home, if people can see my fingers. Yes, and delicious. <laughs> and they love, I mean, it helps them to then remain here because they're, it's almost like their umbilical cord strengthens to home. They remember this isn't home, but they're here with purpose. Right. So consciously in this life, they can remember the details of where home is because they've seen it in a regressed state. Right. They exactly. They remember that. Completely. Oh, I love that. Yeah, that's, it's so powerful. And uh, one time I, in, in a regression, I, I got to sit with my higher self. Mm. And, you know, I, he showed up as an old, a wise old man. But I don't know that higher selves have any particular form other than what they want to choose. That's correct. Impress us. <laughs> exactly. Impress us with a, a flavor or an image. Yes, exactly. I'm very impressed. Yeah. And I didn't even know he was my, um, my higher self until um, Paul, you, you probably know Paul. I do. I do. Until he said, ask, ask your, the guides you're with if you can meet your higher self. Hmm. I said, okay. And I said, can I? And they said, oh, you, that's the old man you met earlier. <laughs> right. right. Exactly. As compared to me, because I'm an earth-based soul, I can tune into my higher self, but I know my primary guides. And um, an earth-based soul virtually always has a, a guide, one or more separate from their higher self. Right. Yeah. yeah. My maternal grandmother has been a guide of mine all my life. And I never met her because she died before I was born. Right. And it's, uh, it'll be interesting to meet her when I'm on the other side again. <laughs> Absolutely. And, um, and so, you know, it, it's, it's so fascinating. I can't keep thinking that way about so many different aspects of reality that most people have no idea about, including mm -hmm. walk-ins. Yeah. Now you've had people who, you've had clients who've been walk-ins. It's, it's rare, but happens. And my understanding is that a walk-in only happens at either an extreme time of trauma or I guess relatedly an extreme time where the original animating soul is not sufficiently capable of uh, coping with the changes that are going on in that uh, particular person's life. And so, yes, walk-ins do happen, even though there were many times years ago, you know, Michael Newton was a lovely, lovely, um, wise person. He's also a generation older than I am. So at times, Mm. Uh, he he had a little bit more of an old school mentality. And I think what happens too is that I see Michael Newton as the grandfather of the knowledge that he brought forward. And then those of us who studied with him and then worked with him for years and um, do our own work, we're like the next generation. So Newton seemed not sure about walk-ins I've had enough walk-ins in my practice um, that I didn't tell them that was the case. They explained it to me that I think it, it absolutely happens um, occasionally. Yeah, and, and I wonder when it comes to things like astrology, human design, the destiny cards that are based on our birth dates, right. and they define the mechanics of our personality through our lives. So what happens if, if it's another soul that takes over Afterwards, what are they guided by? Yeah, if I, I would, my understanding is that if you're an earth based soul and you have a walk, you have the experience of a walk in, you're going to, the walk in is going to be another earth based soul, and either the same guides will guide you or um, even more highly evolved guides will step in. If you're an IP soul, your soul would be replaced by an, by an IP soul right. so that there's not complete shift. There's also, I write in my books about soul archetype. 
the soul archetype of that um, soul, and our, our archetype is immortal, does not change if you happen to have a walk-in. Oh, that's what I meant, yeah. Because the yeah. archetype is what I'm talking about, because we're born into, you know, where the planets were, moment of our birth, et cetera. And right. so that's, that is just part of the nature of this human body that carries the energy that prevails. Exactly, exactly. Good to know, I think that's cool. So we're getting near the end of the show already. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing how fast this has gone. Uh, so I want to remind our listeners that you're the author of Souls on Earth, Exploring Interplanetary Lives. Your name is Dr. Linda Backman, B-A-C-K-M-A-N. And is there a website, et cetera? Yes, the easiest way to find me is Raven Heart Center. Raven like the bird, this is all run together, R-A-V-E-N. Heart like the heart in your chest, center, the American spelling, C E N T E R, dot com, ravenheartcenter.com. I travel about 50% of the time to guide clients. I work from my home in Boulder, Colorado, about 50% of the time. And you also, you travel with your husband, don't you? I, my, my dear and beloved husband, I've known him through many lives and a long time in this lifetime. Yes, um, he uh, was once a university professor and administrator. He runs our business and he's great at being an admin right. person. Right. Yeah. That yeah. It's great to have a, a duo like that. So, um, good. Thank you. I mean, I, I, I love this so much. You're a wonderful guest and you, your work is fantastic. So really appreciate talking with you, Linda. Thank you, Peter. It's been my pleasure. And this is Peter Roth, your host of Energy Stew at PRN.FM. I can be reached at Peter at Heart River, H-E-A-R-T, river.org. I'd love to hear from you and thanks so much for listening. <laughs>